Can you change people that don't want to change? Chris Crone here with Limitless TV and my wife, Kalen, is joining me today. Hi guys. And she's had some powerful life experiences that she's gonna be sharing about how, um, how powerful belief really is in our own personal life. But tell me, can you change people that don't wanna change? You certainly can't, <laughs> but there's hope. So if we're gonna talk about the power of belief, then let's go ahead and tackle probably one of the most challenging beliefs that there is. Change is hard. And you know what, it reminds me of that story of Scrooge, you know the one, right? The man named Scrooge who clearly doesn't want to change. And yet, because he spent an entire lifetime resisting it, what ended up happening before his death day? Well, he was visited by these three different ghosts that ended up helping him discover the power of change. In fact, the reality is that go ahead and believe change is hard. Go ahead and believe it's difficult. Go ahead and believe it's impossible. And let me ask you, what results is that belief system creating for you? And what Scrooge believed was, I have to hold on. I can't let go. I have to keep things to myself. I have to keep me to myself. I have to keep my money to myself. I have to shut everyone else out because I hate people. And what did he get from that? Misery, being alone, having all the money to himself, but he never spent it on anything. So all you need is the right kind of leverage. You break someone's pattern enough times and a new pattern shows up. That's exactly the pattern interrupt that Scrooge had in his life. And right now, if you have a, any kind of negativity in your belief system, today's video is your pattern interrupt. Because if you're conscious, you can create a new pattern. And specifically, we're talking about the power of belief. So Clem, instead of this belief that change is hard or difficult, first of all, did you ever struggle with that belief yourself? The one that comes to mind immediately was, was years ago, like before we had kids, I know that's like an eternity ago. Um, I hated working out. I hated working out. Chris enjoyed it and he would often invite me to go to the gym with him and it'd just be, no, 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 leave me alone. I don't wanna work out. And I went through, you know, as, as moms do, a series of years where, you know, you're fighting, I need to, I should, I don't wanna get the baby weight off, you know, I don't wanna, you know, pile that on from baby to baby. And so I would, I would go back and forth and back and forth to the gym. And then I'd be like, well, I'm just having another baby. So, you know, it's just gonna come back on again. You know, that really didn't help so much. But then it was after, you know, our fourth kid, and I'm like, hey, I really gotta get my game on here, and if I don't want it to be miserable, maybe I should make a different belief. I should create something different than I hate working out. The only way you create change is changing what you link pain and what you link pleasure to in your neural system. And that happens through choosing simply into a more productive belief. Because if you decide going to the gym is hard, then what you're doing is that you're linking it to pain. So by the way, every time you think about the gym, pass the gym, see a gym, hear someone talking about the gym, automatically you're neurally linked to this idea of pain, difficult, hard. Well, the reality is, you're that way because you chose to be that way. You may have been young when you made that choice. You may not have been aware that you were making such a monumental choice for your life, but you did make it. So guess what? You can unmake it by making a new choice. What did you decide for yourself that changed things for you? Well, some of my beliefs that I had, I mean, there was, I, I don't like working out and I had to look where that came from. And it came from my mom didn't like working out. Honestly, that's what it really was. I didn't really give it a shot. And when I thought about it, the few things I did as a kid, um, I played softball, I enjoyed it. I was on my drill team, so I was one of those, those flag twirlers. I enjoyed that. The, the few things I did do up until then, I actually enjoyed. And so um, one of the other beliefs was, I, I don't like the monotony of running, or I don't like running. Well, okay, but what do you like? So I found that I actually liked weightlifting. I liked going to you know, an aerobics class. And so I decided to find things I did enjoy and then build that as my evidence of, I do like working out, this is fun. I did it with friends instead of by myself. That made a difference. So there's lots of things you can do to support that belief, even if it's new and you're not sure about it yet. And then finally, I came to, I really enjoy working out. My body feels better when I do. So right now I'm gonna actually catch Clem maybe a little off guard. Oh, and, no. and I wanna bring, <laughs> I want, I want bring up something specific that just blew me away with the power of her mind. Because I remember that when we had our first child, 
Um, Clen, it was she was really committed to having an all natural childbirth. We went to the the Bradley method training and no babies. Yeah, I was, I was yeah. coaching and training my wife through all this stuff. And bottom line is, with that first baby, once it got hard, once once Clen got to that part of transition, all the training went out the door. At one point, she was crawling up and clawing up the side of the wall, and it was so painful as her husband to watch this this level of pain. And 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 part of me just felt like, man, our training didn't work. It, having an all natural baby was such a painful experience, to the point that when Clem was pregnant with her second child, I remember it was about three months before you were going to give birth to Kaiser, that all of a sudden that fear came back, saying, oh my gosh. The training's not going to work. And I kept saying, I don't want transition. I just don't want to do that again. And, and some of you ladies, if you've had a baby, I guess, no, I, I'll never probably understand it. But transition is like that most painful part before you get to the push. But I still wanted to do it naturally. So, so, so that those two things were just fighting each other. Yeah. So what was really amazing for me was to say, hey, Clint, let's take the power of belief to the nth level. Let's do something that you'd have to call miraculous. Let's actually see how powerful your mind is. And so he asked me, what would be the most miraculous thing in the whole world for this next birth? And it was, I would skip transition. Which would mean literally going from having contractions <laughs> eight to, to ten, pushing. Eight to a 10 centimeter with just not feeling it. That would be a miracle. Meaning not crawling up the side of the wall. Right. Like one of those terrifying ring movies. Because <laughs> it felt a little that way. Um, so I'm with... Sorry. No, no. So what was really beautiful is that Nearly every night, Clint and I went and we worked on her belief system. And I remember um, you would get into a deep meditative state and we would have the conversation of envisioning your ideal birth. Well, and I wrote a nice mantra, a nice half a page mantra of how the birth was gonna go, how I was gonna feel, where my mind was gonna be during it. And it was a comfortable birth. It was amazing. And, and every single time we got to the stages of, of delivery, we always left out the part about transition and just talked about that the contractions were increasing, that it was interpreted as pressure as opposed to pain, and that they it was time to push. They were getting stronger, not more painful. Well, and so the amazing thing was the day that Kaiser was born, it was not only like the most amazing short birth. It was three hours, which was amazing. I walked in at a six centimeter. She walked in at six and, and we were, and we were sitting down and Clem wasn't screaming. She wasn't crying. She was squeezing my hand with some totally definitely good pressure. I was totally in my zen. I was totally in my zen. It worked. I, we walked in about an hour after we got to the hospital. It was time to push. And there were maybe one or two really strong contractions but they were nothing compared to that first baby. And then it was, oh, you're a 10, time to push. And I'm like, <laughs> really? It worked. It worked? Friends. It's done? Our minds are so incredibly powerful if we'll give them the benefit of the doubt. Here's the biggest advice for the power of belief that I would share today and that we have as our message. Do not waste your time investing in good mixed with bad beliefs. You have to make a choice and start supporting the left or the right. Start, start supporting what you want. What you like to say is plus one minus one equals zero. So if you have positive beliefs and negative ones at the same time counteracting each other, like I want money, but money's bad. Like it's not gonna work. It's not gonna work. And so, and, and so decide today, and this is the bonus for today, is become single-minded. Make your eyes single to what your desire is and exile any thoughts, words, language, verbiage, anything that would counteract the evidence that you're looking for. We've been able to apply this for years now with our children, with our marriage, with our love life, with our education, with, with, with spirituality, with every part of life that's important to us, with our bodies and our health and our fitness. And um, right now, we've got, we've got an agreement with each other and the agreement is know what we want and speak and create what we want. And what we've been purging is human nature that naturally and unconsciously gravitates towards negativity, negative beliefs and limiting beliefs. And I'm inviting you today, we're inviting you today to make a choice. Choose to either keep it positive, but don't keep it positive and keep it negative. Just choose one, know what you want, believe in it, see it in your mind before you're ever gonna see it in reality, live as, with it as if it's already happened, and experience for yourself just how powerful you are.
Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe below and also comment and tell us about some of the changes you're making in your life. And if you want to take change and, and put it on steroids, take it to a whole new level, then why don't you uh, sign up to come out to our three-day Limitless event. It is the ultimate and extreme three-day breakthrough experience for anyone where if you know you need change, if it's feeling uncomfortable, if you don't know where to start, then come to this three-day event Limitless. You can go to LimitlessSeminar.com, get more information on that, click the link below, and we'll show you the most effective easy and simple methods for changing everything not working in your life so that you can create the life that you want.